Well, tonight it is Sing Along Tuesday at Melba's on Greenmount, but at closing time last night it was Shove, Swing, and Punch Monday. ABC 2 News' Christian Schaefer, the big question. Why were police so quick to talk about this one when in the past they weren't, Chris? Yeah, that's right, Jamie. The police commissioner said he wants to be open and transparent when cases like this happen. Also, unlike another video released last week that showed an officer repeatedly punching a suspect, in this case, the commissioner mentioned several times that his officers were assaulted before a cell phone camera started rolling. Still, the suspect's brother says those officers went too far. Cell phone video captures closing time at Melba's on Greenmount Avenue early Tuesday morning. According to charging documents, 29-year-old Jamar Kennedy got into a fight with Melba's security. That's him in the white shirt. It could have ended much worse. He could have died. It's, it's a chance that he could have died. Five officers on the scene for crowd control tried to subdue Kennedy. Eventually, you can see one of the officers strike Kennedy several times with his baton. When he asked him to put his hands up, his hands was up, and they still, you know, one person hit him, and then what's the point of another person hitting him if you've seen that his hands up? Tuesday afternoon, the police commissioner called a news conference, even calling on a member of his command staff to walk the media through that video. We're going to go frame by frame. We're going to take a look. And if officers did not use their appropriate uh, force at their appropriate time and how many strikes that they used, we'll hold them accountable for that. The head of Baltimore City's police union says the video shows officers doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I think this is a perfect example of what our city police officers are up against every single night, and it's another example of the good work that they're doing. And the commissioner says he wishes he could see what happened before the camera starts rolling. The officers say Kennedy assaulted them. This incident then further highlights my continuing resolve to look for the possibilities of bringing body cameras to Baltimore. On Monday, members of city council introduced a bill that would do just that. Meanwhile, Jamar Kennedy's family has contacted an attorney. They're focused on getting him out of central booking, but they believe police went too far. It has to stop. Some they have to stop this somewhere, somehow, somewhere. They got to stop this. Jamar Kennedy is charged with assaulting police and disorderly conduct. The five officers involved in the incident have been placed on paid administrative leave while the incident is investigated. Live in the newsroom, Christian Schaefer, ABC Two News. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Gilbert. And I'm Jeff Barn. Five Baltimore City Police officers are currently on administrative duty after several videos surfaced showing officers using a stun gun on a man and then beating him with batons. Janice Park live in Waverly tonight and tells us police are reviewing that video second by second to see if officers acted appropriately. Janice. Hi, Jeff and Jennifer. Well, this incident happened around 2 a.m. outside of this club. Now, Police Commissioner Anthony Bad says this incident is just one reason why he is advocating for his officers to get body cameras. Now, Jamar Kennedy, he was charged with assault, but we spoke to his family who says they believe it's police who should have been charged. Less than 24 hours ago, Melba's place on Greenmount Avenue was the scene of a violent fight. Police say first between Jamar Kennedy and the white here and a bouncer. Kennedy's family says he was trying to retrieve his hoodie, but he left in the club. As people scream, police use a stun gun on him twice and hit him with their batons, a video that was hard for Kennedy's brother to watch. And his face is bloody and he had an asthma attack, but that's not the only, they didn't just hit him in his face and his head, they hit him in his body too, repeatedly. Baltimore City Police say their force investigation team will look at each blow. The suspect continues to go past the officer with his arm in the air. To see if five officers followed policy in the violent arrest of Kennedy and whether officers continued to strike him unnecessarily even after he had his hands behind his back. And the police commissioner says that the videos only show part of the story that right before people took their cell phones out and started rolling, the suspect had fought with a bouncer and punched a police officer. It never looks good. It has never looked good to me any time that you have to use a baton. It never looks good any time that you're trying to struggle with a guy. But the question becomes not if it looks good or not. Is the force appropriate for the circumstance? And does it meet our policy and our, and our training? And that's what we have to go back and review. Kennedy's family says they still haven't been able to see the 27-year-old who has facial injuries and, in their opinion, is the latest victim of excessive force. It's something that they need to really sit down on and fix because it doesn't just look bad on the officer, it looks bad on the city. 
And during the rest, a female officer did render aid to Kennedy. She even got his inhaler out of his pocket for him. We're live tonight in Waverly, Janice Park, Fox 45 News. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Bubala. Denise and Vic are off, and here's what people are talking about tonight. It has happened again. Police caught on video in a chaotic struggle with a suspect, but this time the city's top cop says his officers used necessary force, and he's renewing his calls for body cameras on every officer. WJZ is live at police headquarters. Here's Christy Aletta with the investigation. Christy? Well, Mary, it all starts when Jamar Kennedy gets into a brawl with the club's bouncer. Police step in. It escalates. And that video that you're about to see is the aftermath. A violent arrest caught on camera lands Jamar Kennedy in jail for assaulting officers and police brass explaining why there's mayhem outside Melba's nightclub. I never want officers to use force that is unnecessary or excessive. Also, but I also do not uh, uh, condone uh, citizens punching police officers. Charging documents reveal Kennedy's struggles with one of the club bouncers early Tuesday morning. And when police step in, he turns violent. An officer saying, Kennedy threw me off him. The tape shows the rest. Kennedy was resisting arrest, officers using batons and tasing him twice. The second comes after he's on the ground on top of another officer. This is a perfect example of what our city police officers are up against. The police union says the five cops were doing their job. If this suspect had not assaulted our officers inside that club, that force wouldn't have been used. The images, though, are jarring to patrons. This man doesn't want his face shown. I felt like I was looking at something from Ferguson. The managers inside Melba's didn't want to talk on camera, but they did tell me they have very few of these types of incidents. But Tuesday's brawl reinforces the commissioner's push for body cams. Just last week, a disturbing video of an officer punching a man became public when a lawsuit was filed. Never looked good to me any time that you have to use a baton. But the question becomes not if it looks good or not. Is the force appropriate for the circumstance? With only one camera from one angle, police struggle to answer that question. Now, Baltimore City Police are asking anyone else who was there with cell phone video of that incident to come forward so they can see exactly what happened from all angles. Reporting live, Christy Aletto, WJZ Eyewitness News. Christy, thank you. And the five officers involved are on paid administrative leave. Another violent arrest caught on camera as a Maryland police officer appears to knock out a man after responding to a traffic accident. It happened back in March during a late winter snowstorm. Crime Adjust reporter Joy LaPola now has a story you are seeing first on Fox tonight. You will be told get out the way. It's a morning of terror that two Maryland men won't soon forget. First, their car skids into a snowbank. Then a police officer knocks out the driver. I was trying to help get my friend home, and now I'm doing any help getting up. It was, it was scary. Listen, I don't want problems. Listen, listen, listen. I don't want what happened. I don't want problems. Sir, please, I got it under control. Please. Tunde Adeyale's attorney says AAA had already been called. It makes me angry. Angry because the two officers seemed unwilling to hear anything Tunde had to say. Yes, yes, You're yes. You're about to have major problems. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't care. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Listen to me. You're not going to move? Listen! You're not gonna move? I'm gonna move. Because you're gonna go to the hospital in a minute. Move your <laughs> now. No, that's All right. Tunday says he was trying to find out was the officer's names and the address of the impound lot. Questions that appeared to agitate the officers as one pulled out his stun gun. And Officer Rob Kaplan reached for his baton. Get, I, get out the way. I just wanted to know his name. This ticket doesn't show where we can get it. It does. Step Where out of the, the way. Car? Where we can get the car? You would be told to second. Get out the way. Because when I told my father about this, he wanted to cry. Because I mean, with everything going on okay. in life today, like he could have lost his firstborn son, and that was really tough for me. I did speak with the police chief, Michael Scott, here at the Mount Rainier Police Department. He didn't want to comment, saying that he had yet to see the lawsuit. When I offered to fax him a copy, he declined. He did tell me that the department here has 17 police officers, and Officer Kaplan is still employed here. This is why we have a constitution. This is why we have rights. I would like to know why. Why did he feel that I was a threat to him? What did I do? You would be told 
in Mount Rainier. Joy Lapola, Fox 45 News. Now, police did ticket Tunde for failure to control his vehicle and negligent driving. Both charges were dismissed when officers failed to appear in court. Tunde has since moved out of the state. He says he doesn't feel safe here.